Hi everybody, my name is Amy Deacon and I'm a zoologist at the University of the West Indies in the Department of Life Sciences. And I'm here for Wildlife Wednesday with Chaguanas Public Library to bring you another species of amazing freshwater fish that we find here in Trinidad and Tobago. And today I'm excited to tell you we're going to talk about a species that produces its own electricity. And the species that we're going to talk about is this. It's known as the banded knife fish. That's what people in the aquarium trade would know it by. In Trinidad, the local name is cutlass fish, and the scientific name is Gymnotus carapo. So here we have a photograph at the top and an artist's impression, um, a painting at the bottom. So um, what you can see straight away is how it got its name. So if you see the head is at this end on both of these pictures, um, you can see it has the shape of a knife so or a cutlass. So it kind of is flat and pointed at either end. So that uh, makes sense that they're called a knife fish or a cutlass fish. And then, of course, they're very stripy, which is why they're called the banded knife fish. And these patterns are very variable. So the colours and the exact formation will vary from individual to individual, population to population. So the other thing you can see on this picture here, which is maybe clearer on the bottom drawing than on the photograph, is that they have a fin that goes all the way along the bottom of their body. And this fin, although here it's just very um, kind of flat, when they swim and when you watch them swim in the water, um, and you can kind of see it here, this fin moves. So it kind of um, has a wave-like motion where the undulation kind of moves down the body, which is a really graceful um, and elegant way that they, they swim and quite unusual for a fish to swim in that way. So that's very cool if you get the chance to, to ever see that. Now, I mentioned that these fish were electric and that's what I want to talk to you about now. And Many people wouldn't realise that we even have a fish that does that in Trinidad and Tobago. You may have heard of the electric eel that is famous from the, um, the jungle rivers of South America. And indeed, these are very closely related. So evolutionarily, they're closely related species. Um, now, the electric eel from South America um, produces enough electricity to actually stun its prey um, and to defend itself from predators. So it's quite a powerful current that it produces. Now, our... Um, cutlass fish doesn't produce that kind of strength of electricity but it does produce enough to form an electric field all around its body and what this allows it to do is that if prey which would be a, maybe a small fish a smaller fish a guppy for example comes into that electric field then the fish senses that and can prey upon them it's also thought to be used for communication and if another cutlass fish breaks that electric field um, and comes close then they would sense that as well and because they're quite territorial they might react quite aggressively to that. So they don't produce enough to, to stun a prey or to, to, to scare off predators but they do use that electricity to find their prey to navigate around and to communicate which is really quite amazing. So I hope this example of a fish from Trinidad has surprised you and adds to your sort of amazement at what we actually find in our rivers here in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and it's not a coincidence that we have these amazing fish. We're so close to South America geographically. And in fact, historically, it's only a few thousand years ago that Trinidad was connected to the mainland. And what that means is that we're lucky enough to share a lot of species with South America and that diverse fauna in the jungles there. But the advantage we have is that we're a small island, which means actually we can get to those rivers much more easily than you can reach rivers and those habitats in, on the mainland. So not only do we have a lot of those cool species, we also have a better chance to see them. So really, we should feel very lucky. But of course, if you want to actually see the electric eel um, or have a chance to experience other species like piranha, then you will have to make an adventure to the mainland of South America.